NFL Draft. Thank you to NFL fans around the world for your tremendous passion and support throughout the year. As you all know, these next few days are important to our teams, our players, our coaches, and in particular, you the fans. So let's get it started. With the first pick, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Jameis Winston, quarterback, Florida State. Winston's struggles off the field will cause some teams to cross him off their boards. But Lovey Smith, known for picking defensive linemen in the first round, finally takes a chance on a quarterback. If he can get rid of his early game blunders, and he can be a star at the next level. The first order of business is a big maturity upgrade for Jameis Winston off the field. On the field, kid can make all the throws. Where he goes awry is when he tries to make plays outside the pocket. You would think the type of athlete Jameis Winston is, that would be a calling card. But most of his errant passes and inconsistency come when he rolls out of the pocket and tries to make plays. With the second pick, the Tennessee Titans select Leonard Williams, defensive end, USC. With the second overall pick, we're taking the top player on our board. This won't be the most popular pick, but we are taking one of the safest players in this draft. This player is scheme versatile. He can kick inside to three technique, but he will be primarily a five technique in our base defense and will instantly upgrade our defense. With the third pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Dante Fowler Jr., edge rusher, University of Florida. The Jaguars add a versatile pass rusher to their defense that could really use help in that area. Fowler's a guy that can stand up or you can put his hand in the dirt and really be that defensive end at the nine tech that allows you to have multiple options. He is that Leo rusher that Gus Bradley's scheme needs on the edge. And he's got the frame and the size and the strength that really allows you to do a lot of different things as a pass rusher and really lets him take advantage of the offensive lineman he faces in a number of different ways. With the fourth pick, the Oakland Raiders select Kevin White, wide receiver, West Virginia. Kevin is a big wide receiver with a huge catching radius. And with the Raiders' young quarterback, the ability to throw the ball deep and make big plays comes easier with this kind of athlete on your football field. In the red zone, he gets it and gets after it. He's able to track the ball so well in the air that he can reposition and recoil his body, isolating defenders away from him almost like a small forward in basketball. With the fifth pick, the Washington Redskins select Todd Gurley, running back, Georgia. While he may not be ready for the season opener, Gurley is clearly at the top of what is a deep running back class. After several seasons in the NFL, Alfred Morris has shown he is not a three down back. He can, however, keep the seat warm while Gurley recovers from a torn ACL. Gurley is a dynamic runner who fits in any scheme. He has great vision, agility, power, and good hands out of the backfield. The icing on the cake is his kick return ability. Gurley is a future pro bowler and the future of the position of running back in Washington. With the sixth pick, the New York Jets select Vic Beasley, edge rusher, Clemson. The Jets add a pass rusher to their already stellar defense to really put it over the top. Quinton Copels hasn't quite lived up to his draft status and they've got a couple of other aging rushers in Calvin Pace and Jason Babin. And adding a guy like Beasley, not only does he bring the insane production from college, but he's got the speed and the measurables that you really love to see coming off the edge. And he can really help Todd Bowles have a successful transition as he takes over the team in New York. With the seventh pick, the Chicago Bears select Amari Cooper, wide receiver, Alabama. 
Cooper is the most polished wide receiver in the draft and maybe in the past 15 drafts. Cooper has a sixth sense about him when he's running his patterns. He understands where he's going to position himself prior to every catch. He gets himself open by running great routes, which then helps the quarterback. In Chicago, the much maligned Jay Cutler needs a receiver that's polished, that's going to get himself open, that's going to make big plays. In losing wide receiver Brandon Marshall, the perfect remedy is getting this youngster from Alabama. His ball tracking ability is tremendous. He understands where he's going and how to get to the football. Amari Cooper, Chicago Bear. With the eighth pick, the Atlanta Falcons select Devontae Parker, wide receiver, Louisville. With the departure of Harry Douglas, the Falcons are in need of a third receiver. Julio Jones is in the final year of his contract, and Roddy White is in the twilight of his career. Parker is a smooth route runner with excellent hands. At six foot two, he plays much bigger than his listed height. I expect him to have an immediate impact. This player is not afraid of the spotlight as displayed in his performance versus Florida State this past season, where he posted eight catches for 214 yards versus the undefeated Seminoles. With the ninth pick, the New York Giants select Danny Shelton, defensive tackle, Washington. The Giants take another defensive lineman in the first round, and they really get a smooth, big defensive pass rusher that can get off to the quarterback from the inside. He's absolutely huge, but he carries his weight well, and he's got range and speed in bursts that can really help him get around on stunts with the lateral quickness that you love to see from the interior. He's a guy that can bull rush at the point of attack, but then once he's in the backfield, he's got great vision, and he can really do a lot once he's there. There were some concerns about him playing on third downs and some, some motor concerns, but I really think playing with that Giants defense and along that defensive line with some of those guys will really be a good spot for Danny Shelton and will really help bring back some of that toughness and strength to that Giants defensive line that helped them win a Super Bowl not that long ago. We have a special guest to announce the selection. Please welcome one of the greatest players in NFL history, Hall of Fame running back Barry Sanders. With the 10th pick, the St. Louis Rams select Andrews Pete, offensive tackle, Stanford. The six foot seven, 312 pound whopper of a man with lower body strength overwhelms the point of attack with a tremendous kick slide and ability to control defenders inside in down blocking and destroying or outside in pushing rushers past the quarterback with ease. He holds his ground against bull rushers. He doesn't get pushed back. He's so technically sound from top to bottom. If you look at his lower half, it's amazingly immense. And his ability to use that power at 21 years old, he's only gonna mature into his size and strength and be that much better in the future. The Rams lose their left tackle in long. And Robinson, being groomed on the inside, can move over to play right tackle, where this guy will be the dominant left tackle that they've been searching for for so long. With the 11th pick, the Minnesota Vikings select Trey Waynes, cornerback, Michigan State. The addition of Terrence Newman is merely a stopgap measure. Waynes is a long corner with good ball skills, and he is equally proficient in run support. The addition of Waynes gives the Vikings another weapon to slow down the great receivers of the NFC North as the Vikings continue to build a good young roster. With the 12th pick, the Cleveland Browns select Bud Dupree, edge rusher. Kentucky. The Browns don't opt to take Marcus Mariota 
despite him still sitting on the board, simply because Mariota is a guy that's going to need help. I mean, he's going to need a solid team around him in order to be successful. And if you add him to this Browns roster right now, he's just going to be the next in a long line of Browns failures who get pushed out there too early and struggle to reach their potential in the NFL. So instead, the Browns opt to take one of the, the promising young edge rushers from this group in Bud Dupree. Dupree's a guy who does need some work in the NFL, but you see a lot of the measurables and the, the natural explosiveness and speed that you love to see from pass rushers. A good coach can sit him down and work out some of the mechanics, but you know you see the way he bends on the edge and the way he's able to break down in space and, and really control his body and get his way to the quarterback one way or another. He's a guy that put up some production in Kentucky and he can really help solidify the pass rush of the Cleveland Browns and, and put their defense in the best position to help their quarterback. With the 13th pick, the New Orleans Saints select Shane Ray, defensive end, outside linebacker, Missouri. The six foot three, 245 pound Ray is scheme diverse. He could play in a 3-4 or 4-3. He could reach the passer in several ways. He's got an explosive first step, and his initial quickness gives him an advantage over offensive tackles. He turns the corner low and fast, the likes to, with which you want to see on the NFL level. He's got flexible hips that allow him to explode from the lower half with plenty of strength. Shane Ray is a violent tackler. He gives the Saints something they're missing. With the 14th pick, the Miami Dolphins select Lyle Collins, guard, LSU. Collins has excellent feet and will easily make the transition to guard. He is a plug and play player who improves the offensive line immediately. He is a road grader who moves bodies in the running game and is very physical at the point of attack. He will immediately improve the offense along with the additions that the Miami Dolphins have made during the offseason. With the 15th pick, the San Francisco 49ers select Brandon Scherf, guard, Iowa. The 49ers have done a lot of questionable things this offseason, but they start to get things right here by solidifying their offensive line to help put Colin Kaepernick in the best position possible. Sheriff is a guard with broad shoulders and a very strong upper body with a wide base and you know he doesn't have the longest arms but they're long enough that he can do just fine inside. He's got good feet and a good lateral quickness and he'll be able to really shore up the interior to help both Colin Kaepernick with pass protection and allowing his running backs Carlos Hyde and now Reggie Bush to really take some of the pressure off him and allow them to work up the middle of the field. With the 16th pick, the Houston Texans select Jalen Strong, wide receiver, Arizona State. Big and physical wide receiver at 6'3", 215 pounds. He can outmuscle defensive backs who try to mix it up with him. He's a productive pass catcher at traffic. He's tall, thick, and has big hands. He's got a very good football acumen. He can plant his foot, change directions quickly, and he's an excellent stock blocker, something the Texans really want to establish, that run game with Bill O'Brien. Getting a big-time receiver opposite DeAndre Hopkins and using Cecil Shorts as a speed guy to take the top off of defenses, Jalen Strong will be the perfect complementary receiver for the Bill O'Brien offense in Houston. With the 17th pick, the San Diego Chargers select Melvin Gordon, running back, Wisconsin. Gordon is an explosive back with the ability to take it to the house at any time. Gordon does need to improve in pass protection and as a pass catcher, but Brandon Oliver and Danny Woodhead can fill the role of third down back as Gordon continues to develop in those areas. He has a great first step, great cutting ability, great vision, and great balance. The addition of Gordon takes pressure off of the aging Phillip Rivers and keeps the Chargers a contender. With the 18th pick, the Kansas City Chiefs select Marcus Peters, cornerback, Washington. 
Marcus Peters has the size for the position with great speed to go with it. He's got great anticipation and recognition skills as well as competitiveness. Marcus Peters has the aggression to play up in press coverage and the mobility to drop back in the zone that really gives him a lot of options for the team that drafts him. There are some off the field issues that have to be addressed, but I, I believe that he can convince teams that those are solved. And I think the Chiefs will get an excellent corner here with this pick that will help them shore up that secondary. With the 19th pick, the Cleveland Browns select Malcolm Brown, defensive tackle, Texas. Giant, stout human being with thickness throughout his upper and lower body. Powerful and quick off the snap. Malcolm could dominate the front seven with his ability to consistently get double teams. He's got great bend plays low to the ground, his pad level is always in the appropriate place. He's got great, strong hands. He can grip and rip and get to the passer. Malcolm Brown accelerates off blocks, but also has tremendous football awareness. Malcolm Brown, Cleveland Brown. With the 20th pick, the Philadelphia Eagles select Marcus Mariota, quarterback, Oregon. This is the epitome of a value pick. If Chip Kelly could design his ideal quarterback, he would come up with Marcus Mariota. It's a match made in heaven. All of the questions about Mariota's transition to the NFL are eliminated as he is very familiar with the Philadelphia Eagles system. Mariota is a quiet leader who has excellent mobility and touch on his passes. I expect that he will be successful from day one. With the 21st pick, the Cincinnati Bengals select Randy Gregory, edge rusher, Nebraska. The Bengals get Randy Gregory here and they can use him in a similar role as their former defensive coordinator Mike Zimmer used Anthony Barr in Minnesota. They can use Gregory as sort of the strong side linebacker in base defense and then when they get into the nickel situations, they can use him as a pass rusher on the edge and really solidify the group that they have there. He's an explosive rusher with great speed and range. He's great in space and can change direction easily. He's fluid, athletic, aggressive, and he's got that length that you love to see. I mean, certainly there's some off the field issues with uh, the marijuana use right at the NFL Combine, but the Bengals have a history of sort of corralling players with off the field issues and really keeping them on the field as much as possible. So I think they can really utilize Gregory in similar ways that Anthony Barr is utilized in Minnesota and really get good value here. With the 22nd pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Landon Collins, safety, Alabama. Landon Collins is a versatile back-end defender. He has great instinct and consistently is put in the right positions to make plays pre and post snap. He anticipates the action very well as a physical tackler. He runs through the alley and demolishes ball carriers. He consistently shows the ability to recover and catch the man he's chasing in coverage. He's rangy, but he also has an understanding of how to use the sideline. The Steelers losing Troy Palomalu to retirement offers Landon Collins the opportunity to become the man in Pittsburgh. With the 23rd pick, the Detroit Lions select Jalen Collins, cornerback, LSU. Collins is a long, agile corner who has an excellent ability to break on the football. With his fearlessness and physicality, Collins is excellent in run support. He's an immediate upgrade over the aging Rashawn Mathis. His selection makes what was once a position of weakness a position of strength. He and Darius Slay make a formidable duo for years to come. With the 24th pick, the Arizona Cardinals select Oa Odigizua, defensive end, UCLA. Odigizua gives the Cardinals a defender who they can use in a lot of different ways. They can stand him up and rush him as an outside linebacker, or they can put him down as a five-tech defensive end 
and put him there where they, they could use depth really at either spot. Odigizua has such long arms and he's, he's very thick with, with great bend and flexibility. He's really a guy that can attack blockers before they can get to him and shoot through the gap with his great punch and timing when he gets engaged. And he really knows like how to use his legs to get good leverage and he understands what he has to do to get around the defender in front of him, whether it's from the outside or the inside. He can do a lot of things for this Cardinals defense and they're really gonna like having a weapon like that. With the 25th pick, the Carolina Panthers select Jake Fisher. Offensive tackle, Oregon. Fisher has elite quickness and body control out of his stance. He's fast to get his hands on a defender, whether it be inside positioning or outside position. He's a natural knee bender and shows zero struggle in playing with low pad level. He's got a great jab and stab and controls the defender to where he would like him to be. Carolina needs a left tackle. Jake Fisher and Carolina are a match made in heaven. With the 26th pick, the Baltimore Ravens select Nelson Aguilar, wide receiver, USC. Aguilar gives Baltimore the speed threat that is now lacking with the departure of Torrey Smith. Aguilar is built in the mold of a young Steve Smith. With the cupboard bare, Aguilar should step in right away and contribute as both a receiver and punt returner. With the 27th pick, the Dallas Cowboys select Eric Armstead, defensive end, Oregon. The Cowboys have a need at the defensive end position and they get a guy who has a lot of potential in Armstead. Give him some time with Rod Marinelli this offseason and you can really build him into a pass rusher you would love to see. He's got the size that, that's 6'7", 292 with long arms and huge shoulders. He can really move the lineman in front of him. He, he's a bit raw and has a lot of work to do on his pass rushing moves and his pad level, but he has great bend and he can contribute both as a pass rusher and in the run game. And he's really something that, given the right coaching with, with a guy who's done it before and Rod Marinelli, the Cowboys could really get a great pick with Armstead in the late first round. With the 28th pick, the Denver Broncos select Cameron Irving, center, Florida State. Irving is the premier number one center in this draft. He consistently is in perfect position with great hand set and readiness. He's been able to play every position up and down the line from left tackle to left guard to center. The Denver Broncos need a center and who better to learn the center position under than the general, Peyton Manning. Irvin enjoys the game, is a great athlete, and is enthusiastic. He plays under control, and he's great in a zone-blocking scheme. The perfect fit for the Denver Broncos offense. With the 29th pick, the Indianapolis Colts select Eli Harold. Linebacker, Virginia. With the aging Robert Mathis and Trent Cole on the Colts roster, Harold fills a need. He is surprisingly strong for his size at 6 foot 3, 250 pounds. He possesses excellent quickness and agility and shows a variety of pass rush moves. He has previously played in a 3 4 and should make the transition. He has coverage ability and should contribute as a situational pass rusher in year one, then move on a full-time role in the near future. With the 30th pick, the Green Bay Packers select Eric Kendricks, linebacker, UCLA. The Packers have had a need at inside linebacker for a long time now, and they were forced to move Clay Matthews in there last year just to patch it up as a band-aid. Now they can choose to leave him in there and add a guy like Eric Kendricks, who has great athleticism and, and range in coverage that allows him to do a lot of things in the middle of the defense and, and hold it if they send Clay Matthews on a blitz up the middle. He's very aware of his surroundings and he's very strong in the open field and he's able to stay low and finish his tackles. He does have a, some issues coming off the of blocks and charging up the middle, but with a guy like Clay Matthews next to him in the middle, or if you kick Clay Matthews outside, 
the, a lot of the pressure will be taken off of Kendricks, and I think he can really succeed as a three-down defender in that Green Bay defense. With the 31st pick, the New Orleans Saints select DJ Humphreys, offensive tackle, Florida. Humphreys a nasty player. He's got a great demeanor for the offensive line position. He's tough all around. Plays through and past the whistle. He's got great hips and knees. He gives himself a great base. DJ Humphreys, I could see in New Orleans pushing Teron Armstead to the right tackle and get Streif the heck out of the roster. Or you can move Armstead into guard and put Humphreys. What he does do is offer you many different options along the offensive front where Drew Brees took a somewhat of a beating and thus his ability to showcase that he's an elite quarterback was hindered. Offensive line protection takes precedence in New Orleans, and with this pick, they are able to steal DJ Humphreys from Florida. With the 32nd pick, the New England Patriots select... Kevin Johnson, cornerback, Wake Forest. Johnson is excellent in man-to-man -man coverage. He has a smooth backpedal and smooth hips to turn and run with receivers. He takes good angles and is willing in run support. The addition of Johnson brings depth to the cornerback position that took a major hit with the departure of Darrell Revis. 